In this video, we're going to look at some of the different forms of evidence for evolution. We're going to talk about paleontology, biogeography, comparative embryology, comparative anatomy, and biochemistry. Okay, so firstly, paleontology is the study of fossils, and we can look at the fossil record and work out what fossils are there and how long ago they were there. Uh, the way that we do this is through the law of superposition, which says that fossils that are older will be on the bottom and fossils that are younger will be on the top. And so looking at the different things that are around, we can see an increase in complexity between very, very old fossils and relatively modern fossils, uh, as well as looking at different areas where different fossils are found or the same fossils are found. Uh, and that shows us evolution of a particular area. Something in particular that shows us these changes from one organism to another is uh, transitional fossils. Now, transitional fossils are those sort of missing links that show the transition between two different ancient forms. Uh, one of the most famous of these transitional fossils is the Archaeopteryx. And this is a picture of an Archaeopteryx. Uh, and it is the transition between lizards and birds. So it, while it has a lizard-like skeleton and teeth, uh, it has evidence of feathers and a wishbone for flight muscles, uh, similar to that of the birds which came after it. So that's sort of the link between those two uh, classes of animals. Biogeography is the study of living things and their distribution throughout the world. So looking at the similarities and differences between where things are found. One of the important things to note here is the Russell Wallace line. Now the Russell Wallace line runs between Australia and Southeast Asia and is a, well it's a made up barrier but it shows the difference between the Southeast Asian animals which are predominantly placentals as with the rest of the world and the Australian animals, which are predominantly marsupials. Uh, so there's a big difference between the animals, even though they are fairly close together uh, currently. Now this shows the reproduction in isolation uh, and separated ice, uh, evolution that has occurred between Australia and Southeast Asia. And it's only in relatively recent times that Australia has been so close to Southeast Asia because they are on different tectonic plates. And now when I say in relative recent times, we're talking about recent times in a geological sense, uh, so that does mean over hundreds of thousands of years. Comparative embryology is looking at the similarities between different embryos. And when you compare the early stage embryos of pretty much all vertebrates, uh, that is animals with a backbone, they all have a very, very similar uh, structure and similar features. One of these features are gill slits, which are found on embryos of all vertebrates, including humans, even though uh, these gill slits don't actually turn out to be gills in humans as they do in fish. But this uh, link during the early development shows some sort of historic evolutionary relationship. Comparative anatomy is the study of different animals and how they have similar or homologous structures, even though they may use these structures for very different things. So for example, the pentadactyl limb is found across many different animals, including bats in their wings, dolphins in their flippers, uh, and humans in their hands. So while using uh, different uses here, uh, their anatomy is very, very similar. So this shows that there is some sort of evolutionary link there, uh, which has changed over the course of time. Biochemistry is the study of living chemicals, and it's looking at the different biological molecules and comparing how similar they are across different living things. And this shows a close evolutionary relationship between those things who, which are quite similar. Uh, DNA has been studied quite extensively, but other biological molecules, such as proteins, hormones, RNA, hemoglobin, and blood antibodies, have also been studied, looking at the similarities between different animals. Uh, looking at DNA, we've found out that human DNA 
shares 98.8% of the same sequence as chimpanzee DNA and 98.7% of the same sequence as bonobo DNA. While comparing chimpanzee to bonobo DNA, there's 99.6% similarities. What this shows is that evolutionary, uh, chimpanzees, humans and bonobos all would have had a common ancestor where the humans would have split off at some point while the chimpanzee and bonobo's common ancestor moved in a different direction and then finally splitting into those two different species that we have today. So the more similar the DNA, the more closely related or the shorter time ago that the common ancestor was around. In this video, we've looked at paleontology being the study of fossils and in particular transitional fossils, biogeography, the study of living things and their distribution around the world, comparative embryology, looking at the similarities between in particular vertebrate embryos, comparative anatomy, looking at the similarities between homologous structures uh, and in particular the pentadactyl limb, and we've looked at biochemistry being the study of biological molecules and how similar they are across different living things.